in the name of Jesus. Amen. Paul says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him as righteousness. James says, was not Abraham justified by works when he sacrificed his son Isaac on the altar? Really, Bible? Is it faith or is it works? Come on, Holy Spirit, why are you messing with us? Don't you know that these are the kinds of things unbelievers point out and they say, see, look, the Bible doesn't even make sense because it contradicts itself. One minute says you're justified by faith. Over here he's saying it's justified by works. All right, everybody just calm down. Don't panic. We're going to sort this out. First of all, by remembering that neither Paul nor James is going to make any sense apart from Jesus. And so we begin with understanding what is exactly is righteousness. What is this righteousness that we have been given, that we've been hearing about all week? Righteousness, very simply, is everything that Jesus is and everything that Jesus has done for you. That he is the Holy Son of God who came into this world in the flesh, who was born for you, who lived for you, who died for you, and in his suffering and death on Calvary took away all your sins, who rose from the dead for you and left your sins buried forever, whose death and resurrection are your salvation. The one who then took that righteousness that he has has, and that he's earned for you and delivered it to you in the waters of holy baptism and covered you with his own righteousness so that his righteousness is your righteousness. The same righteousness he gives you as he absolves you of your sins, preaches the good news into your ears, and gives you his own body and blood to eat and to drink for the forgiveness, life, and salvation. That's righteousness, and it's yours because of Jesus. And faith, faith is simply the trust that says, that righteousness is now mine on account of Jesus. Faith is simply the belief and trust that what God has done in Jesus Christ is for you. It's yours. It's a done deal. It's been given to you, and you have it. It's yours now as a gift. You're standing now because you are clothed with Christ. You're standing with God. Your, your, your cred, your rep, 100% legit, perfecta mundo. You are righteous and holy, a forgiven child of God. Now, you can't just look at someone and tell whether they're righteous in God's sight or not. You can't just look at another person and say, has that person been justified by grace through faith? Can't tell by looking. So the Lord gives to us good works to do for our neighbor, for the sake of those around us, to show them that we are his baptized children, that we belong to Jesus, that we are righteous in God's sight. Because you can't tell just by looking. The good works that he gives to us to do, they aren't for God's sake. He's already made you his child in Christ. They aren't even really for your sake, because otherwise we just go around boasting in them like we earned it. They're for the sake of those around you. Show me, says James, your faith by what you do. That's for the sake of your neighbor. That's for the people around you, so that they will know that you are a child of God. And that you live by faith and trust in Jesus Christ as a free gift. As Lutherans, we call this our vocation, our calling. You know what these good works are. That you kids are going to be the kind of kids that do what mom and dad says without any argument. First time, don't have to repeat it. To be the kind of boyfriend or girlfriend that respects marriage and acts accordingly until you are married. To be the kind of kid who goes to church to receive the gifts of God and helps the old people stop making that joke about the confirmed kids that never come back. You are the ones who hear a rumor and you defend that person and you let that rumor die with you. The ones who love to come to higher things all week and and just feast on the Word of God, but go home and still keep feasting on it, showing up in Bible class and in church to receive God's gifts over and over. Those are the works that show to the world around you that you belong to Jesus, that you have been justified by His grace, that you are His freely for Jesus' sake. Those are the works that show your faith to your neighbor, 
Again, not for God's sake, but for your neighbor's sake, because they need you to love them and to help them and to do good things for them. So James and Paul, who seem to contradict each other, but actually don't, James and Paul both teach us repentance and faith. The Holy Spirit has used these uh, writers, these apostles, to teach us repentance and faith that trusts that we're already justified by God through Jesus Christ, and now we live for our neighbor. Paul helps us by remembering and teaching us to repent of ever thinking for a single moment that God loves you and accepts you because of good things you've done or because of bad things you've avoided. He loves and receives and accepts you solely for the sake of Jesus Christ, whose death and resurrection are your salvation. And on the other hand, James reminds us and teaches us to repent of thinking, hey, I'm justified, I'm good to go with God, it doesn't matter what I do for my neighbor. He is reminding us that just our justification, our being righteous before God, doesn't really help our neighbor at all in and of itself. So we have the good works that we do for our neighbor in our callings and in our vocations. Don't for a moment think that God's salvation is not a free gift. And don't for a moment think that being saved, your neighbor does not need your help and support and love and blessing. You see, your status before God is a done deal. You are righteous before God in Jesus Christ. And now you just show that to your neighbor as you live in uh, and through them and helping them, loving them, serving them. Sometimes your conscience will trouble you And you will think, I did this thing, and now I'm out. I've done this sin that's so bad, or maybe I failed to do something I was supposed to do, and things are so awful now, God will never, never love me, and I'm going to hell. And Paul's promise and reminder that God's gifts come to us as exactly that, gifts. We haven't earned them. And we don't have to work off our sins or make up for the things we failed to do. We simply rejoice that for Christ's sake, those sins are forgiven. Your sins have been put away. What you've done, what you failed to do for God, for your neighbor, all of it is forgiven by the blood of Christ, which is yours through your baptism into him and through the supper that he gives you. And then sometimes when we're strolling along nice and thinking, hey, I'm a Christian, I go to church, I'm justified, life is good. Maybe James will be the Holy Spirit's kick in the pants to remind us, hey, don't forget your neighbor. Don't forget your brothers and sisters, your moms and dads, your friends, your co-workers, your fellow Christians. They need you too. They need you to do those works that, whatever they might be in your daily callings and vocations, they need you to do those for them too. And that's the life of repentance and faith. That's the life that is love toward God and fervent love toward one another. You see, Jesus sorts all this out for our salvation. James and Paul, let the haters hate and not understand the Bible because they don't understand Jesus. But in Christ, then, we see how it all fits together. That in him, in Jesus, you are justified by grace. And all that you have is a gift accounted to you for righteousness through faith in him. Your salvation is all Jesus, just as the good works you do are all Jesus working in you and through you, so that in him you are saved and set before God. And in him and through him, your neighbor is blessed by the good things that you do for them. In the name of Jesus, amen.